Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be installing a BMW turnover ball. All right, so we've got a 2018 Dodge three quarter ton that Adam and I are going to be using for our official show vehicle that we're going to be driving around for the next three or four years. We're going to be doing a lot of installs on it. We've talked about this with you all, and we've introduced you to this truck. The first thing that we're doing with this truck is we're getting a gooseneck ball in it because our show trailer is obviously a gooseneck style, so we've got to put a gooseneck ball in. We turned to our friends at B&W tra uh, Trailer Hitches to send us a gooseneck ball for an installation video and a big thank you to them for doing that. This is the first B&W video that we have ever done that's a full installation. And I'm going to be honest with you, this platform uh, is probably one of, the, one of the best platforms to install a gooseneck ball on. And B&W has done a phenomenal job in making it super easy for you to be able to install this. Now, a lot of you all will watch this and go, why would I want to install a B&W turnover ball? Most of the new trucks today are coming with balls already. Yes, but you can opt out of that. This is for the guys that already have probably a fifth wheel companion hitch that they've spent money on and they want to be able to use that on their newer trucks. And that's why that you would be here and actually installing a hitch on your truck. So we're going to teach you how to do that today on our 2018 three quarter ton Dodge. For the 2014 to 2018 Dodge three quarter tons, the correct part number is going to be 1384 from B&W. Now the 1384 only fits for the three quarter ton trucks. If you have a ton truck, you're actually going to need a 13 to 14 in these year making on um, the in these year models. Now you'll notice by what I have laid out here on the table, if you've installed a turnover ball before, you know that this is a lot less hardware than we normally have. Normally with our older trucks, we have not only the plate, but we have side rails and everything is, uh, you know, is modular and is, and it comes together obviously to make your gooseneck ball. With this, we're actually going to be using existing structure inside of the truck on the 14 to 18 trucks that B&W does a really, really good job of linking you up with as well. So, um, you know, what I really wanted to talk about with B&W with what they're doing on the newer model trucks is they've gone a long way in their kits to making the installation for end user much, much easier. Now, a lot of the kits you're still going to have to do going to have to you know measure twice and cut once you're going to be very very thorough when you read the instructions because we're you're punching a hole in your bed for crying out loud so you want to make sure that you read your instructions here but they do a lot for you going with these to be able to make uh, the installation much easier this little piece of c-channel when you open this kit up you're going to look at that and go what in the world is that that is a template for the actual uh, hole that you'll be drilling in these trucks Another note to that for you guys that have done this before on older trucks, you probably uh, cut a four inch hole in the bed. This actually is for this, this particular uh, part number, you're gonna be punching a, th a three and a half inch hole in the bed. This template gets you lined up perfectly as to where that hole will go. You don't have to measure, it goes right there and you get it in. Now, when you cut the safety chains, B&W has done a really good job. They've sent you a template that goes in the bed. So when we get ready to punch through for the safety chains, this you don't have to do it from underneath the bed you can actually do it from the top if you remember doing it from underneath the bed it's hard to get the drill in there to do that you lay this in here you mark it you knock your holes in it and it's good to go so on the structure of this and you'll see as we go along this is the two nuts that are that are going to be attachment points on both sides of the hitch now you look at that l-shaped bracket and you're going to go what's that going to attach to this is nothing more than a jig for you that's going to hold the two nuts that you're going to attach to. So look, B&W has done, made this perfect. They've made it to where you can reach from the outside and position that perfectly above the hitch to where you can tighten everything down. So that's really, really good. So that's just for, again, another thing, ease of installation. With the turnover ball, you know the form and function of this. These are 30,000 pound hitches and really, really nice. They have gone a long way to um, making the hitch uh, lock and unlock for these very, very much a lot more functional. Um, you know, this plastic ring that's in here, this is actually going to be a buffer to keep the hitch quiet in the truck uh, and get, get, get your spacing correct. So they have done a lot of engineering work inside the kits to make it user friendly, installer friendly, and really, really just a very, very nice hitch. It's kind of modular and works with the existence, existing systems in the truck. Of course, you get the quality that you always get with BMW. The hitch itself is powder coated, really, really nice, keeps the rust down. 
and everything there. So now we're going to go ahead and get started with our installation. So the first thing that you want to do before you start your installation is you want to go ahead and remove the spare tire. It's just easier. You're going to be going right here, but for us, we got the spare tire out of it because it makes for a better shot for you guys and just gets everything cleared up for us. Now on your diesel models, you're going to have this heat shield here. The heat shield is held in by three 10 metric headed bolts on the frame rail and then there's two above in this uh, in this round bar channel so we're going to we're just going to remove all of those and get this heat shield out, out of our way and then the two that are on the round, round bar stock the best thing to do is throw your wrench or your ratchet down and those are going to be on the left and right side of it orientation so got to be Amish with this because my power ratchet will get in there we'll pull these two out we will make you suffer through it all right we're just taking our heat shield down now like leave that last one on the side of it to where it uh, didn't fall down and hit you in the face with that there with that down, that gives you a pretty good shot to everything. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and release this uh, exhaust pipe. And the reason why we wanna do that is because we just need enough down pressure on this to be able to get the plate in there. Now you can see that you've got a couple of brake lines here, but they're, they're, they're plenty flexible. So they're gonna give you what you need to get there, but you're really gonna have to put the bring the exhaust pipe down just a little bit. So the next step in our prep work before we get in here to uh, start marking for our hole is I'm just going to go ahead and get the exhaust pipe unhung. I don't know on the gasters what it looks like but on the um, on the, the gas trucks you just got a, uh, a little three standard thing here. I just hit it with a little bit of uh, slick them up there and I try to go each one of the standards at a time. I use a big pair, you've seen us use these before. We just use a big pair of channel locks like this. And what you do with the channel locks is you put the channel locks on the end of the standard or, or the stud that the, that the isolator is on and then put it on the back of the isolator and just pinch it. And what that'll do is that'll just keep walking until it walks off the end there like so so you just got to keep working with it and again these three studs it's kind of they're awful to be honest with you so you just got to keep working at it so once you get it over the ends of it where they're flared on the end you you pretty much got it made Once I get it over the ends, at this point, what I'll do is I'll just get a prize bar behind it and just keep working it off the end there. Oof. The three-year one awful. So that gives you enough down to where you can get that plate underneath of it. A whole lot easier so that's got us set up so now we can go ahead and start getting ready to set up and mark for our hole so inside of your BMW kit they send you this nice little piece of C channel it's got this little hole in the center of it and what this is is this is your template to mark your pilot hole for your three and a half inch hole for the BMW hitch so BMW makes this template it's really really nice it goes right here into the existing uh, C channel piece that these trucks have. It goes right here into this template or into this spot and it sits in there flush and holds itself. So what you do now is just take a Sharpie, mark that spot, 
mark it real good. And then you pull that little template down and you've got your spot marked there. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get a uh, center punch and a hammer and we'll center punch that for our, uh, for our pilot hole. They don't want you um, drilling that in the um, in the while it's in the C channel, because if the drill gets caught on it and flip, flips around on you, it can get you. So we will just go ahead and punch that out, center punch it like so. And we're going to drill our pilot hole. Once we've got our center hole punched, I just use a 1 8 inch drill bit and go ahead and punch out my, my pilot hole here. Okay. Now that you've done that, you're ready to go up top and cut your 3 half inch hole. All right, now it's time to drill our hole in the bed. Again, this is a three and a half inch hole that you're gonna be drilling, so you wanna make sure that, first off, talk just a little bit about your hole saw. Three and a half inch hole saw. I definitely suggest, I know they're expensive, go ahead and go out and buy yourself a new hole saw. Don't use one that you've got in your drawer that's all dulled up and whatnot. I promise you, a good sharp hole saw will make this job so much easier for you. I like these Linux ones because they've got, got these windows inside of them and you can really see to be able to get your drill bit um, lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, I'm going to get the, my pilot bit cut in there and I'm going to make a couple runs at it and then I'm just going to get through the pilot hole to where the hole saw teeth touch. I'll actually pick it up and make sure it hasn't walked on me. It hasn't. So we're good. It shouldn't walk, but you always want to make sure. Okay. Once it's made contact, I like to let it do a couple of turns backwards. And what that does is just kind of gives you your groove there. That bit's cutting in good, so. All right, a couple turns backwards, we should be able to go forward. Okay, once we get our disc out, Good to go. We got through, and one thing that I had made mention as we were cutting this hole was you want to use your lowest speed drill setting on your drill. And you can, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see that our lowest speed setting there is quite a bit different from the high speed setting. Um, but even in my opinion, this drill is not um, slow enough. I honestly, I've we have an air powered drill, half inch chuck drill, and I should have gotten it to do it. But and I, but a lot of you guys don't have that at home, so we wanted to make sure that we used the type of tool that you would have. So this hole is clean, and when you look at this hole, you will notice that this hole at three and a half inches is slightly larger than the hole inside of the C channel that's right directly below it. And that's okay, that is by design, everything is okay there, so don't freak out and think you drilled too big of a hole. As long as you drilled a three and a half inch hole, you're good to go. So what we like to do is we like to clean up the edges on the hole inside of here. You can use a round file to do that. I just use a uh, wire brush on a impact gun and very slowly go around the inside of this, making sure that it doesn't jump out onto the bed and scratch the bed of the truck up. But all we're doing is deburn that. And when we do it, when we're deburn it, that just keeps us from getting our hands just about half cut off. I'm not going to lie to you. So, and the shards. These little metal shards are awful. So go ahead and vacuum those up, clean out the bed of your truck, and then we're ready to go back underneath the truck. 
All right, now we're going to put our um, these nuts that are on the plate the B and W sends you. These are actually where your four mounting bolts that hold the plate to the the factory C channel. These sit on top of that plate. The bolt goes through the B and W plate through the plate on the the stock plate on the truck, and then into these uh, into these hex the end of these nuts. Now you want the hex head portion of that. If you see this, you've got a hex head portion, and then you've got a smooth portion. Uh, you want the hex head portion of this up, and then on the driver's side of the truck, if you just take your fingers and you reach in here, if you go, if you can kind of see that, I don't know if I can see it or not, there's a, there's a wiring harness that runs along this frame rail right here. Okay, so if you, take your, if you take your fingers and you can just reach above that, beyond the wiring harness is that C channel, that the stock C channel that we're working with. Okay, you're gonna want this plate to lay on top of that C channel, okay? You can feel the bed, you can, when you feel you with, with your fingernails, you hear my fingernails is tapping the bed, the bottom of the bed, and then the bottom of my finger is actually touching that C channel. Then we're gonna go ahead and insert this. Now the, this will go above the wiring harness, but it goes obviously underneath of the bed. And because of this fender liner here, it's gonna be a little bit tight for you. So you just wanna get it oriented in the right place. And if you need to take the fender liner out, you can. However, it's not necessary. All right, so we get that past this upper lip of the bed there. And you'll feel that when you get in there and understand what's going on. But there that is. So. There's two of these, I should have mentioned, these are not side specific. You just wanna make sure that the smooth side's down, then you'll have it oriented correctly. We just put it in on the passenger side, same way we did on the driver's side, except you don't have to fight the wiring harness. And then we're gonna go underneath of the truck and show you getting the holes lined up. Okay, so uh, I made a mistake when I was telling you that. When you bring the, when you bring the uh, jig, I don't know the best terminology, that when you bring the L-shaped jig through here, uh, you don't push the end of the tab past the outer bed flange, and you'll know what I'm talking about when you're doing that. It actually rides right underneath of it. <coughs> Excuse me. So once you get those, uh, once you get that jig underneath of here, what I like to do is just take an alignment tool, uh, your center punch is what you've got handy, and go ahead and get your hole as best centered as you can. All right. Then take one bolt. I start with one and I thread it. I make sure that it goes in there and it threads correctly and it threads smoothly because let me tell you something, with that plate up here, you really just don't want to have to be fighting that thing. So you get that centered up with one bolt and then take it out. If you, if you, if you move it, take it out and put it back in there, okay? And then with one bolt in it, leave one bolt in there and then center up your back hole, the next hole. Once you've centered up the next hole, make sure that two bolts will go in at the same time. And again, you don't want to have to be fighting this with the plate up there. The plate won't have tension on it. I'm going to show you how to do that, but you still just don't want to be doing it. So if you make an adjustment to it, you take the bolt out, and you put the bolt back in, make sure that the bolt is going to go in there and not give you too much, too much trouble. Take your back bolt out check your work and don't go but more maybe two or three threads because you got a lock tight on there and just check them so you do both sides and then that's got your uh, little jig lined up there with the two hex bolts and you're good to go so you want that done on both sides obviously driver's side and passenger side of the truck now we're going to get ready ready for our plastic isolator all right, it's time for our plastic isolator now. And if you look at the B&W pl plastic isolator, you have uh, you have this this side of it that's kind of corrugated, whatever. And you got a smooth side. The smooth side goes up towards the bed. Now this piece goes between the factory C channel and the actual uh, truck bed floor. And there's not much clearance here to get it past. And you can't see because of my head, but just keep working with it, and it'll get there. Watch your eyes. Don't get any of the shards in your eyes. You should probably have eye protection on, and I should as well. And there you are. So we just take that plastic isolator there, and we get it centered of the hole. Everything looks good. Make sure you can go all the way around there, and it doesn't look, feel like it's too much to one side. And there you are. So now we are ready to bring our plate up. 
What I am going to do is I'm going to take a zip tie on this exhaust pipe and I'm going to pull this down. That'll give us another inch of clearance there, but I tell you what, it makes all the difference when you go to put this plate inside here. So like I said, take a ratchet strap and whatever you got to take it to on this lift, it's very convenient for us because we can attach it to the lift, but we're just going to pull straight down on it. We're going to give ourselves about another inch, make all the difference in the world. All right, so what I wanted to just show you was the ratchet strap on the exhaust pipe. Probably gave us another, honestly, two inches of clearance for that plate. And it really, I mean, honestly, I hope that the shot is showing this. It's just, all we're just doing is trying to make it easier on ourselves. It's a small plate, should be pretty easy. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put the truck down. We're gonna show you what we do in the bed to able to suspend the plate when we go back up with it. All right, so we're gonna show you how we hang the plates. Um, so when you have your BMW plate from the bottom, what you're needing is you're needing some way to support it so you're able to attach it to um, the mounting points. This works for any of the different BMW hitches. You're gonna have to suspend all the different places, doesn't matter what truck you're working on. So BMW actually makes a fixture for this. Um, if you wanted to buy that and you're gonna do several of them, that's, it's a good investment or you can do it this way. Uh, we just use two by four and just cut them to the length of the bed. Uh, and then what we do is I like to use the zip straps or the ratchet straps that are, that you just pull tight, just a kind of a cinch strap. So what we do is we will take the non-business end of the strap and go ahead and drop it down in the hole and get ready to catch it on the hitch. And then, of course, you'll have the business end. Once the hitch gets up, you call for your partner and he'll hook that onto the latch itself. And then you just pull it tight with the tag in and that holds the, the, uh, that holds the plate up. So a really nice and easy way to do it. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to just cinch it all the way down. All you're doing is just trying to hold the plate. So like I said, again, you want the latch closed on the plate so that the latch is through there. And then that gives you something for this to hold, hang on to. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my uh, piece of my strap down there and just get ready. Uh, Tom from our IT department, he's gonna get, jump up. He's gonna help me. We're gonna lift the truck back in the air, but we're gonna show you putting the plate up now. All right, don't mean to be, beat a dead horse, but it's a good time before you lift your plate up. Check all your holes again on your bolts and make sure everything is lined up because I can promise you while you're fighting with this plate, you really don't want to have to be fighting with alignment on these bolt holes. So that's what I want to do here real quick. Everything is good. All right, so we've got our tag end of our strap held through the hole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the plate and I'm going to sit it up here and start orienting it. Now, a couple of things that you want to remember. Number one, don't put the full weight of the bracket on these brake lines. If you're going to rest it, you can rest it on the exhaust pipe. The exhaust pipe will hold it just fine. So as I'm doing that, I'm going to try to keep this off these brake lines as best I can as Tom and I are working to get straps oriented and all the like. So I think we're pretty much ready here. Orientation of this plate for this particular part, number 1348. Try to show you this where it's not in our light. You want the latch mechanism towards the right hand side of the truck, which is the driver's, I'm sorry. You want the latch mechanism to the left hand side of the truck, which is the driver's side of the truck. And what that does is that orients the plate with these two holes in the middle. These are actually your safety chain holes. They'll be at the back of the plate. So that's where we're gonna be. So I'm just gonna sit this on the uh, sway bar real quick and get my strap on there. So what I'm doing with my strap is I'm just taking my strap and putting it down in the hole and I'm putting it on the latch there. All right, Tom, go ahead and pull that strap just a little bit, okay? So you'll just keep the, you'll just keep pulling on it just a little bit, Tom, so the slack comes out of it. There you go. All right, hold on just a second. All right, so up with the plate we go. Kind of resting everything on the exhaust pipe as best we can. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. You can.
That's all right, Tom. We can get it when we get it up there. <laughs> Now, Tom, see if you can go ahead and get your straps back oriented on it. Alright. You ready? Go there you go. Alright, go ahead and get your other side of your strap on it. Alright, and go ahead and pull tension on it so it holds it. Got it? Okay. Alright, perfect. Okay, so now the way Tom's got that is where we can still turn the plate. And you saw how we went in there. Uh, what I was doing first off is I was trying to go, uh, I guess, left to right, but depending on how you want to look at it, go ahead and pull a little more tension on Tom. I've got it here from the bottom. Um, and that, that wasn't the, the right way. So you want to do the forward side of that up at an angle and over these brake lines, because again, what we're trying to do is make sure that we don't have full weight of the hitch sitting on these brake lines. So that's in good. We're in good shape there. We don't have to worry about nothing. What you can do, if you've done like Tom's done and he's left our strap pretty well loose, you can go through here and you can turn the hitch to where you have a good angle on your bolts to start. just like so. Now we're gonna leave everything loose here. We're still, the plate it, it has tension on it from the strap that Tom's got on the front, so we're not hanging on these bolts, but we're not, we're not tightening these bolts up super, super tight either. We're just taking them two or three threads, getting them to their lock tight line, and that's as far as we're going with them. So we're gonna go ahead and work with these bolts and get two or three threads on these and get them started. With our B&W plate up and we still have the ratchet strap on in the bed, what we really need to do is we've got to square the plate up and squaring the plate up is super important in this configuration. If you've looked at this hitch on, um, on, on other installation videos, you're gonna notice that there was a safety chain bracket. They've made a revision to this kit, that safety chain bracket is not there anymore. So now when we punch for our safety chains, there's a template that comes with the kit and it has to be done th from the top. So having the hitch square is going to be a, um, is, is going to be a very important part of this. So we have to get that squared up. So I like to use machinist rule because you know, it's just, it's just easier for me to read something I'm used to reading. So I need to square these up on both sides and make sure that my, my uh, front to back and side to side is good and square. With these having nylock um, um, lock tight lines on them, however you want to say it, with the ratchet strap up there, what I like to do is just go ahead and take one of the bolts and tighten it up. All right, and then what I'll do I want to leave it to where I can still move it. And then check my square. Like so. And then I'll go ahead and zip everything up. But, you know, I won't put a, a final pull on it. I'll just take them up and snug everything up. I like to go ahead at this point and just go ahead and torque the plate down, taking these to 150 foot pounds. Make sure you read your instructions and get your respective torque for the part number that you're working on. So we're assembling our handle now. So the latch mechanism, I wanted to kind of show you this. Let me get my stool here. The latch mechanism, so you see it, and I'm gonna point it out from underneath the truck. I hope this has got a good sign on it. The latch mechanism is gonna work in this forward seat channel, forward of the hitch plate. So the way this, 
the way this goes is this portion of the mechanism is designed to get you in up in it's designed to get the handle in that c channel so it mounts to the plate just like this but <clears throat> before you do that you have to assemble the handle to this mechanism so the mechanism as i showed you there the way it goes you want this larger flat surface up and then the handle attaches to that with the uh u portion of the handle or the the handle portion of the handle turned upwards so this is facing upwards and that's facing upwards you got square holes in here so this is for carriage bolts so just go ahead and assemble this to the mechanism before you assemble it to the plate and torque these down to 30 foot pounds per the instructions so i'll assemble that just like those the plate is on top of the powder coated plate and then the handle is turned up and this is the correct orientation for that all right so now we're going to go ahead and fish our latch handle through the frame and we showed you this c channel right here which is actually just part of the bed uh, the bed channel and between this uh, functional channel that they put in here for the, the gooseneck is what we're talking about on that so this is a really nice time to have somebody to help you um, well, you want to fish this through and when you're going through it you just want to be conscious of the brake lines and what i like to do is just get the get everything turned to where it'll just kind of make it all the way out to the fender flare or to the bedside and then the fender flare and then what you can have your assistant do is just turn it and tweak on it until it can until it tell you you know just, until you can get it out through there is the thing there it is perfect and that got us past the uh the wheel well there so we're in good shape so you're clear of there is an abs wire that's right here you want to make sure that you're clear of that you're not pinching anything you want to make sure that you're clear of the brake lines of course all the things now just go ahead and take your carriage bolts and they go to the mechanism itself just like so and if you can't get them in the position that they're in go ahead and move it to the unlatched position i've already got my lifting device out of the the bed i guess i forgot to put that point in there just like so throw the nuts on it and tighten her down same torque here 30 foot pounds all right so what we want to do is we just want to go ahead and actuate the mechanism make sure everything clears go ahead and open it up add and pull it out and then push it toward the cab to lock it all right should stay by itself all right now let's close it opposite of what you did there perfect we are good to go all right all right good deal we're clearing everything everything is 100 percent safe we are not causing any problems and we do not have anything hung up and we are good so now we are going to go ahead and release our exhaust pipe and we're going to put our grommet back on there's no trips or, or ticks yeah. there are no tricks or tips for this it's just one of these grab and growl deals make sure you get some sort of lube on the standards and that should go right on so we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll meet you up in the bed and get ready for safety change. So B&W sends a chain guide for marking the holes for the for the safety chains. Now, you can drill these from the bottom, but the way this this hitch is made, it's it's there's a, a it's it's hard to get a drill bit to, to drill them from the bottom. It's possible, but it's just a little bit more difficult. So they make this guide where you can you can do it from the top. So to be able to use the guide, you'll see on the guide it has the different part numbers, 1314 or 1384. So we are the 1384 kit, so that's the three quarter ton and it tells you that there too, all right, on the outside. So what we do here, we get our rule out again and we go ahead and we put our two and five sixteenths ball in and we leave it on top of the latch pin so it's up high. And then you set the guide over top of that. Then when you set the guide over top of it, you just measure the spots from the bed flat to make sure you're square. Okay, once you've got it square, you go ahead and mark it in the holes like so.
And then you got to double check your self, like so. I like to double check my measurements one more time. And then go ahead and lift the template up. And you've got your spots. You just want to go ahead and center punch everything and drill your holes from here. So that's what we're going to do right here. And I'm going to just give them a little light center punch. And then I'll go back and check it one more time on my template. Thing looks good there. All right, I'm going to hit it one time with a pilot hole just real quick so I make sure that I'm not going to get any walk. There's that. All right, perfect. So now we've got our, our pilot holes going. We're gonna go ahead and punch through. I like to punch them all the way through, make sure they line up good with the plate, double check my work before I punch my holes, but then we'll come, wind up coming in with a half inch drill bit and punching the holes through. All right, so we went ahead and we drilled our pilot holes through this and what we did was we raised the truck up and made sure it lined up with the plates in the B&W and it lined up perfectly. So. Just a note here: when you're drilling through the bed, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to drill through the stock factory plate because the safety chain holes are not gonna be in the same place as they are on the BMW. So you're going through that that factory plate as well. Make sure you have sharp drill bits. So we've already punched all of our pilot holes through. We're gonna go ahead and now we want to drill our half inches. Switched over to my drill when I was punching through there. Get my tools out of the way. Just want to make note when you're going through with these safety chain holes, you want to make sure that when you drill and you drill through, just make sure that you make two or three extra passes through there just to make sure that you're alignment on the hole because I don't care how good you are on your measuring, you're going to be just a little bit off the alignment with your BMW, but that's okay. You can fix all that with the flutes of the drill bit. So we're going to go ahead and get our rigs now for the safety chains. Get in your bag and get your safety chains hooks. Your safety chain hooks should, uh, will go straight through the floor. Now one note on this, I see a lot of guys do this. They set these up here and they don't go through exactly for them. Then they get a hammer and go to beating on them. You can creel over the lead thread on this. So just don't do that. Just keep working with it till you get it to go through there. And it drops like right in like that for you. So we're gonna do the other side and then we'll meet you underneath and show you about the springs. All right, so what we're doing is we're doing our springs on our, uh, on our safety chain catches. And these springs, you just kind of unfold them. You just want a single spring on each side. And what you do here is BMW sends you lock nuts for these. And you have just enough orifice in here to get in there to it to be able to get it. So you just put your, your uh, spring on it with the small end down. And then again, these are lock nuts, so they'll go about two threads and catch. And then again, put the spring on, 19 metric, and you tighten these down. Now when you tighten them down, and I did, I did one over here, and Adam can zoom in on it. It's already done but you just run your nut up flush with the bottom of the bolt and then that gives the right, the right tension on it and everything's square there. So what we'll do is we'll tighten these down, on down and then what we're going to do is we've already put our isolator on underneath of here and then we'll put our, uh, our spare tire back up and then just gonna cut, show you some specifics up in the bed and then we're, we're just about done. All right, with your springs on your safety chain holders, this really pretty much completes your installation. Um, with your turnover ball, if you don't know how this functions, 
The turnover ball is just that it's a turnover ball. When you're using it, obviously the ball is going to be up. And when you when you want a level bed, you turn the turn it upside down, and there you go. A word about this: on this model truck, this 18 Dodge, on the in this series this series of years on these trucks, there could be a shock that goes from the rear differential up to the frame. You'll see it; it's right dead in the middle of everything. If you have that shock, you cannot use the ball upside down. You have to leave the ball turned up or take the ball out if you're okay with that. BMW makes a plug to go in there too. You know, this um, this installation with these trucks, these coil spring trucks, you've got the plate, everything's existing. This is a super, super in easy installation. You should be able to have no problem doing this at home. Um, when you get your ball and you go to lock everything in, I want to make sure that I tell you it's always a good idea to put a light uh, coating of grease on these. On these. I'm going to be honest with you, if you've ever had one of these and you've had one get stuck, you know how much of a pain that it is to get it out. So a little bit of white lithium grease on it and should be just fine and you also want to make sure that you check your locking mechanism to make sure that it goes fully through the ball you want to take the ball out of there make sure the locking mechanism goes all the way through and locks everything in and everything is secure because you don't want this coming loose when you're hauling a gooseneck down the road so um, big shout out to bnw for sending us one of these They've made changes to these kits. They've adapted to these new model trucks. Um, and I, I just can't say enough good about them. If, this is the, if you're going down this road and you're considering this, uh, we, would, we would ask you to consider BMW Hitch for your truck. Again, done a great job and a big uh, shout out to them for, um, for sending us one of these for installation. I want to say another thing about the instructions that BMW sends you. BMW sends you a really good tutorial at the head of their instructions that talks to you about how to do your measurements for your truck bed and how that relates to clearance with your trailer. Don't skip through it. You're going to see it. You're going to know that the instructions are, are, are down in there a little bit farther for the actual ball. Don't skip through that. Even if you think you know everything that there is to know about towing and trailers and everything else, one thing that you're going to want to do is make sure you read through that tutorial because the last thing you want and the thing that your friends are going to laugh at you the most about is jacking up the cab corners of your truck because you turned too sharp or you didn't do your measurements correctly. So make sure you check all your measurements on the truck, read the instructions, make sure you've got clearance for your trailer, and you should be just fine. So I'm Wade with Thoroughbred Diesel. If you have any questions about BMW, uh, BMW hitches, just give us a call and please like and subscribe to our channel. And like I said, got any questions, just hit us up. Thanks for watching.